good morning to everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, we are going to have the fourth talent meetup, uh, talking about how to hire the best university talents. And this is in the these meetups are in the framework of a, a, a European project in Nocor Erasmus Plus that is saying that offering a curriculum that combines training in advanced core technology and life science, but also with entrepreneurial uh, knowledge and entrepreneurial education. So the first uh, company that is going to talk uh, today is Donka. Hopefully everything should be okay. Um, let's see if I can switch this uh, to Donka. Uh, so we have uh, here, uh, the people from uh, people from Duncan that is going to explain uh, Jose uh, Madero is going to explain uh, the proposition and the opportunities that you have in this company. So thank you. Um, the floor is yours, Jose. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for your invitation and for the opportunity to present my company today. Uh, my name is Jose Manuel Garcia Madero. I'm the project manager in Donca for two, uh, two and a half years. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce uh, Donca. Donca is a company with more than 40 years of experience developing uh, innovative solutions for the agri-food sector. These solutions uh, include food coatings, additive products to control emerging pathogens and functional ingredients for human and animal nutrition. Uh, the company is located in Alendin. For those of you who are not from Granada or who, who don't know, Alendin is a town approximately 15 kilometers away from Granada. Uh, and the company is currently part of a DNC business group, DNC Holding, constituted by different companies, Donca Spain, Donca Argentina, Donca Chile, and DNC Research Center. This is a technological-based entity dedicated ex exclusively to research and development. Uh, nowadays, the company has a large team of 60 highly qualified employees, including seven doctors, five PhD students, and graduates and postgraduates in different fields, such as food technology, biotechnology, microbiology, chemistry, or agronomy. Uh, since its uh, funda foundation, Donca has been extremely active in research and development. For this reason, the company is today one of the most in in no innovative companies in Granada and Andalusia. Our lines of research are very diverse. We work in a wide range of topics, including uh, developing natural solutions for preservation, pest control in agriculture, or the development of molecules with an application, an application in human, human nutrition and pharmacology. Uh, in order to develop these objectives, the company participates very actively in several funded R&D projects in collaboration with many other companies or public entities, such as universities, research or technological centers. Uh, the company is working now in 14 different projects, both national and international, uh, in different topics. Uh, I, I just give you some examples. Uh, Culture Mix has, is a project that recently started. It's a project funded by the Spanish Ministry of Science and Innovation. And the objective of this project, as its, its name suggests, is to develop laboratory-grown meat that helps to prevent the risk of developing some diseases like colon cancer, as well as other. In this project, we are collaborating with the group of Julio Galvez from the Department of Pharmacology of the University of Granada, among many other companies and universities uh, from all over Spain. Uh, we also develop a project funded by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the COP, the largest producer of olive oil in the world. The aim of this project is to develop innovative strategies uh, for the control of endemic and emerging pests in olive trees. Uh, we are also very proud of participating in a big European project, BioVexo. Uh, the aim of this project is to develop biotechnological methods to find against uh, Silella fastidiosa, the so-called Ebola of the olive trees. Uh, finally, we are also working in a Prima project, another European project with other partners of the Mediterranean countries. In this case, we are isolating bacteria with antagonistic activity against Listeria. The purpose of this project is extending the shelf life of the Mediterranean perishable food. Uh, now concerning the activity and research line for the master student participation, first of all, we are, all, we are aware that this year, uh, last year have been difficult times to organize company internship because of the pandemic and the restrictions 
uh, in the laboratories, etc. However, we are making an effort to continue offering company internships even during this period. And uh, now we have established three priority lines. The first line is the evaluation of the functional activity of vegetable extracts. Uh, this project includes evaluating the anti anti-tumor activity of different plant uh, extracts in third cultures. The second line is the food preservation methods to control listeria. In this project, we are intending to evaluate new preservatives that can be incorporated to food matrices to control this pathogen. And finally, the third line is the preparation of a proposal for a funded R&D project. I think that this, this line in the first view may be less attractive to you, but you also have to be aware of the importance for a technological company, especially for a medium-sized company like us, uh, of seeking financial funding for research and development. There are many companies in the market demanding technical profiles with management experience, so this work may be also useful for your future career. Uh, finally, uh, regarding the needs and requirements uh, for the applicants, we are looking for graduate students in different areas, such as uh, food technology, biotechnology, biology, uh, or uh, biochemistry, etc. Professional experience is not required, but of course, it will be valued. Uh, a good command of English will also be valued, especially for the third line, for the preparation of the proposal for the projects. And, and please note that we are located in Allende. This is important because uh, we are not close to the, to the center of the town, so you need a transport to arrive to the, to the company. There is a bus coming to the village, but you need to walk uh, like 15 minutes from the bus stop to, to the company. So most of the students come by car or organize themselves with other students to share the car um, uh, to arrive to, to, to the company. We also request flexibility of hours. Normally, uh, the students can in the morning, but uh, the working hours can change depending on the availability. So if you are interested uh, or you have any questions or you need more information about some of the lines of research, you can contact me. You have my contact details here. Uh, and me or, I, me or my colleague, Alberto Banez, he's our scientific direct, director and he will be probably your tutor. We will answer you as, as soon as possible. Uh, that's all. I take also the opportunity to tell you that you can follow us in our social media, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, or also in our website where you can find more information about our projects and about, about the, the company in general. So thank you very much for your attention. That's all. Thank you, Jose. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, because it, it's such a wonderful company. Do, do we have uh, questions here? I see some questions. How many students are you willing to, to accept this year, Jose? Uh, for, we, we want uh, at least our first uh, idea is three students, one for each uh, uh, line. One for the evaluation of the functional activity, one for the food preservation methods, and one for the preparation of uh, r and project. Very good. Yeah. Uh, if you want to use the micro and um, ask uh, directly, because uh, I think... Uh, Lourdes, there are two yes. questions in the chat. Can you read it, uh, Antonio? Okay. Uh, would it be possible to be the internship full-time instead of part-time? This is made by Alba Galvez. Uh -huh. uh, what do you mean with full-time? Yeah, for, that's for, the question. Maybe yeah. Alba can explain a little more. Yeah, uh, normally the students have a full-time, but they are not in the company all the time. Maybe they are uh, part-time on the company, but they also can continue working at home with the computer, etc. So normally, we need a full-time dedication for, for the internship, of course. Oh, I, I understand that. Um, the question was by Alba. Alba, could you explain a little more your question? Alba? Alba Galvez? Alba? No. The, the, the other question is, uh, is about the, the vacancies you have in the three offer, because uh, Sofia uh, say that uh, is, is there uh, 
slot available in the in the three positions, or all of them are occupied? No, no, they are they are still they are still free. I mean, we okay. will make a we want to make a decision next week. Okay. So if you are interested, please uh, contact us as soon as possible. But they are still available. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, he's answering now the question oh, is, yeah. is Sorry. saying oh. that if it's possible to she's saying that uh, uh, is it possible to have it eight hours instead of five hours you mean five eight hours in the company in the company exactly. this is difficult eight hours in the company because we have a limit availability so okay. can you leave a comment just yeah. because maybe it's a, it's a confusion mistake in, in the, uh, the the rule we have for the uh, internships. Mm -hmm. uh, in the internship, they, they usually say uh, a student has to spend five hours. But yeah. according with our rules, so the, the important thing is just to, to have an agreement with the enterprise and the students. So for us, it's no problem to modify this number of five hours to, to have more hours, to have less hour. Uh, the only re requirement we have at the end of the internship is you have to fulfill 525 hours of dedication. That so, does not mean exactly to be uh, in the enterprise the, the all this time. It's just uh, dedication to the project. So you have work at home, you can work in the enterprise. I mean, this is a question that you must agree with the enterprise. Yeah. So Alba, if you want to just contact us by email and we will see how we can organize the schedule. So um, um, I, I would like to say too that um, when I uh, first met the Donka uh, with Alberto at that time, and I visited the company, uh, for me it was a, a big surprise because I never imagined the amount of things you are doing. Very interesting thing, and most of them related to biotechnology. So uh, for many people, when the, you talk about the, the food industry, they, they be believe that it's nothing related to uh, biotechnology. But in this case, it is because uh, most of the, the thing are just going to, to preserve, for example, uh, the food, uh, again, the hysteria of other bacterial contamination. Uh, so for me, it was amazing just to discover all of this plastic layer you put in between the, uh, the, 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 the jam um, slides is 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 is, is, is it just a product of biotechnology and things like that. So, is is one of the company that I found more creative in the sense of application of biotechnology in this case to the food industry. But mm -hmm. many 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 possibilities. So uh, for me, it's it's highly recommended just to to work and collaborate with uh, with Donka. Uh, so, uh, Jose, congratulations for this big company you have. Yes. I'm very, I'm very happy to be here. I am almost new because I, I have been working for two years and, and a half only, but I'm very, very happy and also surprised of everything we, we are doing here. Yeah. I think there is another question I, I'm seeing in the chat. Uh, I, I think it's referring to the third line of to the third research lines, to the preparation of uh, funded L&D projects, right? Okay, we have uh, different possibilities. I, I mean, it depends on the period of the project because you know the funded L&D project has uh, established calendar. So it depends on the period of the project. Uh, it depends also on the profile of the student because we have some possibilities. So if you are interested, just uh, send us your profile, your curriculum so that we can see in which uh, project we can allocate you. And also the period, this is very important. Okay, yeah, and there's a... Okay, I think that uh, then we can keep moving. I think that in, in Microbiota you have also some uh, possibilities with Julio Magalvez or, or not? Jose, yes, it's a question of curiosity. Yeah, yes, we are working in several projects of, with the microbiota with uh, Julio Galvez of the University of Granada. Uh, in case, I, I don't know if we can open a new line because it depends on the on Alberto, not on me. So, but 
If someone is interested, of course, they can suggest. And in case there is one of the line that is not covered, we can we can be flexible and, and open a new line. Okay, that sounds great. But thank you so much, Jose. Then definitely, this is a wonderful opportunity. And um, we can keep moving with SIDAP now. If you thank think you. Isabel is, oh, any other question, please? No, no, it's, everything is okay. Uh, okay. Well, so, uh, this is Jose Maria Rosales from okay, the sure. Prize Master. Uh, I got a question not uh, directly related to the internship, but since don't work in the agro-food sector, I would like to know your opinion or your position about the supercritical technologies applied to this sector. Uh, so, sorry, I couldn't understand you. Could you please repeat about? Sure, yeah, uh, about supercritical uh, technologies with supercritical fluids for impregnation or extraction, extraction of. Uh... Oof, uh, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I cannot answer you because I, I'm the project manager. Of course, I don't have a scientific profile, so I don't know. To, I okay, cannot sure. answer you. Sorry to, to this question. But maybe you can discuss uh, uh, first yeah. case because this is very specific question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Okay, Jose, thank you so much because this is really a, a amazing opportunity for the uh, master students. So uh, thank you for your time. Um, we will keep uh, your contact and information to all the students, also from the European students that are here too. Um, we will keep moving to 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 the next uh, institution that in this case is a technology center uh, devoted to functional food and Isabel Borras is going to to present now. So thank you, Isabel. For thank you very much, us. Lourdes. Uh, hello, everyone. Could you hear me? Yes, we hear you very well. Okay. Very well. First of all, I would like to thank you, the PTS, for inviting us to this wonderful meetup and for giving us the opportunity to present our center today. We hope that the student could find us very interesting. As Lourdes mentioned, I am Isabel Borras and I am project manager in CIDAD and a specialist in analytical chemistry. CIDAD is a research and development center located in the PTS, and we are focused on biaptic compounds, functional foods, and nutritional supplements. The center was founded in 2012 with the aims to improve the competitiveness, the competitiveness of food companies, being a link between research, innovation, and technology development. CIDAD possesses public funders such as the University of Granada and the Regional Government of Andalusia, as well as private funders. A private companies such as La Caña, Aceite de Esmaeva, Maus San Miguel, Puleva, Abbott Nutrition, among others. The human team of CIDAD is composed of chemists, pharmacists, nutritionists, biochemists. Yeah, in, the end, in the end, we are a multidisciplinary team working with analytical chemistry, green extraction techniques, metabolomic analysis, biophysic assays, or human trials, among others. One of the main lines of the center is the one that I would like to present here. Nowadays, um, as everybody knows, and with the climate change about our heads, we need to, to create a sustainable world. For this purpose, one, one line of action is to implement a circular economy approach into production companies and also at home, which means reuse and recycle all you can. In the case of food industry, million tons of waste are discarded every day due to multi multiple reasons. On the one hand, we could find very ugly fruits to be in the supermarket, or on the other hand, we could find byproducts such as peels, seeds, leaves, uh, obtained uh, from the fruit harvesting and indu industrial processing. A lot of them are considered byproducts. Uh, with no commercial potential, so uh, consequently they are treated as waste, with high environmental and economical cost. Then, uh, when the food industry see rubbish, uh, circular economy lovers see gold, or which is the same, we see a rich source of bioactive compounds. 
it is commonly known that plants are, are uh, a rich source of phytochemicals with many beneficial effects for humans, such as antioxidant, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, anti-diabetic properties, and among others. So if these uh, fruits, these plants have these bioactive compounds, their byproducts should have this too. So in this sense, we could extract them from this waste mate material using green extraction technologies and then use these bio bioactive ingredients for the formulation of functional foods, foods, nutraceuticals or cosmetic products. To understand this circular economy concept, I present here two examples. Uh, both are projects that are currently developing in, in the center. The first one is called Intesolid. And in this project, we use the olive leaf byproduct obtained in the olive oil industry uh, as reactive ingredient for the formulation of a nutraceutical with anti-inflammatory activity. It is designed to find uh, inflammatory bowel disease. This pathology is a term mainly used to describe two conditions, uh, ulcerative colitis and um, Crohn's disease. Both of them are long-term conditions that involve inflammation in the gut. Their symptoms include pain, weight loss, extreme tiredness, or bloody diarrhea, among others. So in this project, uh, the first step uh, is uh, to use commercial olive uh, leaf uh, extracts, and we characterize the bioactive fraction of them using advanced analytical techniques, mainly HPLC coupled to mass spectrometry. After that, we carried out a microencapsulation with a spray dry in order to protect this bioactive from the aggressive conditions that, that occur during the digestion in the human body. The aim is to protect them in a way that they could reach the colon without any substantial degradation. In this place, they interact with the microbiota, which has beneficial effects for the patients. And the next step is to assure that this protection is effective by performing an in vitro digestion assay. We simulate uh, in this study, the conditions during oral, gastric, and intestinal digestion. And if we have uh, correctly performed the microencapsulations, the compounds should not be degraded during the digestion. After that, we need to evaluate the anti-inflammatory activity in animal models. This activity is performed in collaboration with the group of Julio Galvez that, that Tonka mentioned before. And now, actually, we are developing this, this activity and we are administering the, the optimized olive leaf extract to the animals. And we are measuring in which extent the extract improves the status of the rats compared to controls. And during the study, we evaluate different toxicological, microbiota, and inflammation parameters. And we are taking blood samples too from the rats. These biological samples will be analyzed by high resolution uh, HPLC MS and in order to see the change in the blood profiles between control and treated groups and the possible presence of bioactive compounds in blood. Um, that will mean that the compounds uh, reach the gut uh, without any degradation. Uh, they could be absorbed and they pass to blood, which is the point. And if all goes well in the last activity, uh, we will formulate a pill without this optimum olive leaf extract indicated for patients with this kind of inflammatory disease. The other project that I present here is focused on the use of almond byproducts, mainly the coat peel of the fruit obtained during the industry processing of almonds. The potential application in this case will be his use as food ingredient with antioxidant preserving and technological properties. In this project, we will obtain extract using green extraction technologies uh, with grass solvents, which are safe for food use. After that, we will identify the bioactive compounds by advanced analytical techniques, as mentioned before, and we will study, study their antioxidant and antimicrobial activities. Both of them will determine the potential of almond byproducts for food preservation uses. And moreover, we will evaluate nutritional and technological properties in order to go in depth into its potential as technological food ingredients. And the last activity will be to formulate different food products such as hummus, guacamole, baker ingredients, 
and so on, based on, of, on these almonds, almond byproducts. So in this sense, we are looking for students interested in this topic and in the, in the activities involved in those projects, especially in analytical, green extraction and microencapsulation techniques, and also in metabolomic studies and bioptics assays. I strongly recommend uh, the students who are interested in this line to visit our website to know more about the center and the project that we are developing now, because there are other projects that uh, the students could participate in. And well, this is all I want to say. So if anyone has a question, I will be very happy to answer it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isabel. I am um, no. OK. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Biel. I'm the head of the research project department in of the management of research projects in FIBAO. So I would like to um, have do a quick overview of, of what is FIBAO. Uh, FIBAO is a foundation that manages the research in the different uh, health centers in or Eastern Andalusia, that is Almeria, Granada, and, and Jaén. So we manage research from different points of view. That would be um, clinical research as uh, clinical trials, research projects, and uh, transfer as well. Also that involves um, communication activities, promotion activities, and everything because our aim is to give support to clinical researchers in the research activities. So um, just so you have an overview of the, of, um, of the size, um, this year, the funds raised or, or the projects that we've been, we've been funded have gone up to um, 13 million euros. And, and we have now active around 166 projects. Um, projects funded that were given in the last few years has been 396, if I'm not wrong. So anyway, so there are big numbers. It's not just one research line. That's what I'm trying to explain with all of this, because we support the different research lines that can be um, carried out in the different research centers. Okay, that's why we haven't been as specific in the research lines. Um, I'm going to start with my area, and then some of my colleagues are going to um, to speak about the area. Um, as I was saying before, my area, which is the management of research projects, um, well, what we do is support the clinical research. That is research calls. We have to look for the different research calls. We have to know the needs that our researchers have, and we have to uh, make it easy for them, trying to find those calls so that they can make research. And then the whole project management, the whole process, since we ask for the funding until we, we get the, the, the funding and then all the management of the project. That includes human resources and includes everything. And this we, we do at different levels. We do it with regional projects. We do it with national projects and also with international projects. Uh, right now we've got 16 European projects active and, and as I say now also in the activity and research lines, we're going to have different audits. This year we have audits of the research projects. So an, an audit is a very good way to learn about the whole process and how to manage an European research project. So um, also other lines that we work in, well, we're, uh, last year um, with the, the, the the B Enterprise Master. The project we, we did was um, had to do with responsible research and innovation. Um, so that's a line that we would like to continue because we think it's very interesting. We think researchers are not quite, um, they don't really know about it. And, and in Europe is, is, is fundamental that they have it in the projects. Also now national level, you have to take into account the patients, the needs and everything. So it's a very interesting line that we want to promote. Um, the whole project management, as I was saying before, 
Horizon Europe, which started this year, and we've already gone to ask for some projects in this line, the audits, as I was saying before, and promotion. We also the research promotion. If if we can start moving soon, let's say we would like to go to different centers and and meet the talk with the doctors and and see their the needs and if there are any new needs. Obviously there are also projects to do with COVID that we're working on. So um, I think it's very inter interesting the different lines we want to work with. And then the requirements, well, obviously the, the degree, but also um, some kind of well, health experience, that would be valuable. It's not quite a, a requirement as much, uh, it would be valuable. valuable. And, and then the project management, some, some experience, or if they have the experience previously, we'll ask about that as well. So that um, this was the information I would like to transmit. And if there's any question, I would be very happy to answer. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, maybe you, 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 you should explain a little more what are the, the different lines of, uh, of research for the master's students. But perhaps the, the students don't know too much about how is the project management, mm. or what is the, the, the horizon uh, project, uh, the, or what are the, the different activities, because most of them just uh, finish the, their career in the laboratories. So they know a lot about laboratory, but they little about uh, what's happening outside the laboratory. So, okay. Uh, maybe just one, just one, one or two remarks is, is would be enough. Yeah, in relation with the lines I've, I've just mentioned. Okay. Um, yes, I understand that. And I think that's why it's so interesting because it gives them a different view. It's from the other side. And I also think it gives them skills that if you want to work afterwards in a research group or in a company, if you already know how to manage these, these fundings, um, I think it's very interesting. So to start from the beginning of what we do, as I was saying before, we would ask, talk to the, the, um, the medical specialist and see their needs. And then there are, six, there are different calls um, where the, some calls are to fund some determined research lines, which are only for some research lines and the other general calls. So those calls, what they do is that they give money so you can do your project, you can research. But obviously a doctor that is working in a hospital doesn't have all the time to be with, with a, a different uh, management, um, like for uh, human resources that they may need and they need to, to find the correct profile or finding the correct company that may serve whatever products they need, or um, any other question to do also with the national agency of, of um, medication. So we try to support in any kind of need they may have, which can be a bit administrative, that's true, but there are also other, other aspects we cover. Also, if there's a new call, we need to study it well, because sometimes if you don't do it well, all the effort they've done, it doesn't really, um, it, it doesn't, uh, you don't have, um, uh, they've make, made a big effort for nothing. So we have to really study well the, the calls. Um, talking, as I said before, there are different levels. So that takes me to, to Horizon Europe. Um, so Horizon Europe is a call that the European Commission has just started because the European Commission has calls, uh, well, I started in the sixth framework pr program, which that was around 2003. So each five, seven years, they change the program. And this year, there's a new program, which also opens a lot of opportunities. And that would be Horizon Europe. These projects are very interesting because you have to contact with international groups. Sometimes the researchers have their own uh, contacts, other times you have to look for them and help them. Um, so they're very big projects, very well funded, uh, and for normally a long period where um, 
the difficulty we find is that re the researchers sometimes are a bit scared, but once they start, they're very happy because it opens a lot of opportunities. So for um, a student that starts to learn about Horizon Europe, I think it's very interesting because not many people are able to work in these kind of, of calls. And I think it, it gives them skills that can help them a lot. Obviously, you have to speak English. I haven't put it in the requirements, but you need to have, but well, today, this is all in English. So obviously you need to have the language. Um, so I think those are the two, that is the basic information. Uh, and I don't know if I've, I've been clear enough. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sally. That's such a wonderful, uh, indeed, opportunity. So uh, there is a question here from Paloma. She's asking us about if it's the, the tasks are going to be on, uh, online, they're going to be on site, I think, like traditional on site, uh, or you think that it's going to be more online work? Because I think that many of these things, you can do some research uh, online. But how do you ambition that, uh, Sally? No, um, I think it would be presential, um, not, not online. You can, but we are now working there and at least at the beginning, mm -hmm. we can always, I mean, it depends. You can always talk, see, but at least at the beginning to really understand the, how we function. I think it's important to be there. Um, they would be with me. And, and I think uh, at least the first few weeks and then we can see if we can do it in online or, or any other way. But I, I would like to 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 be with them and and teach them at the beginning. Yeah, that's much better, Sally. So we really appreciate that because yeah. that is a a great opportunity. So uh, if you have any questions, Sally has a lot of experience with these European projects. And right. That's the thing that maybe they can do something. They can do a proposal, and then you, if you supervise that, uh, yeah. that will be wonderful for them and will be a very great opportunity for learning. So thank you so much, Sally. Okay, I'll stop then sharing the screen. Maybe we have to add something more because um, I have another very good experience with FIBAO in the sense that all the students had passed from FIBAO now are hired from different uh, companies and different people. So uh, yeah. all of them, all of them, 100% of them successful. So, and, and the reason is, is clear. It's because of the skill and competences that you acquire in management, and so how to conduct all of these proposals at the international or national level, how to do all of this research related to the hospital is something that a few people can do. So that's why uh, you are in a very good position to acquire this, this kind of skill. And if you are interested, of course, because this is not for, for lab work, it's just to paperwork. But in order to do paperwork, you have to know exactly what is the subject. In this case, the biohealth is absolutely necessary. So uh, it's a good combination. Um, as far as I know, there are many, many, many places in, in, in the, this world in which they try to connect uh, enterprises uh, with the, the, this, this kind of thing. So this management uh, center are uh, becoming more and more powerful, more and more attractive for people. So I think it's, it's a very good place, uh, really, I, I think so. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sally. If you can uh, stay a little bit longer with us because uh, we, Pablo is another uh, offer are uh, going to be discussed here. So Pablo, now you, you is your, your, the floor is yours. So explain your position in technology transfer and um, how you are going to, to work with the different, uh, uh, the different students. Thank you, Pablo, for being with us. Thank you, thank Lourdes, thanks everyone. Um, well, as my, as my colleague, sorry, I think there's someone talking, it's okay? We, we can hear you okay, Pablo. There okay. was some interference through, but now okay. I think that is all it. Okay, uh, as my colleague Sally has said, uh, she had made a, a, a very good presentation of what is FIBAO, uh, what we can offer. I'm going to, to show you a, um, an specific area in FIBAO, that is the, the innovation and technology trans transfer area. Uh, we are part of the Andalusian public health system and we are one of the, one, one of the point, uh, main point of the 
Technology Chancellor Office of the Andalusian Public Health System. So what we what we do is the is what can offer a, a technology transfer office. As you can see in my presentation, we we want to promote in the, the culture of, of innovation and technology transfer. Uh, not, on, not only in FIBAO, also in the Bio, Bio, Bio Sanitary Institute of Granada. And we also support uh, a management in the protection result and the result of business handling. So we want to cover all the technology transfer process. Since we detect uh, the result that can be protected by patent or any other uh, type of protection, till we we uh, will be able to offer this protection to companies and try to license uh, or try to sign, sorry, a licensing agreement with them. So that the student that uh, uh, will be interested in our area, or what we may do is what you can see the in the research lines, uh, uh, especially identification and protection of knowledge, uh, market studies, um, of the research for business partners. In this point, where um, for active research for business partners, uh, once we have the the result protected, we made uh, we make what we used to say a, a technology offer, and we uh, send uh, we we well, we try to to find companies that could be interested in this uh, technology offer. Uh, what are the, the needs and the requirements uh, for for the for the student? Um, more or less, like, like my colleague uh, Sally has said, uh, we, we, it's, it's, it will be interesting. The student will have kind of experience in the health area, uh, and also uh, it's important to to know a little bit of, of English, but uh, not in a very high level. I think that just to be able to write a, a technology offer based on of the patent uh, on the patent, um, more or less with you with this will be enough. Uh, I also want want to say uh, that there, there there were going to be another two two presentation for of, of two of my colleagues for the communication area and quality area in the of FIBAO. Uh, they won't be able to to do the presentation, but it's another offer we we can we can present to you. So we see that you can go to the area that Sally has present to innovation and technology transfer area that will we they will be with me, and also promote promotion um, area and quality area. Okay, so. Uh, I won't be. Uh, I, I don't want to be with more more time for my, for my presentation. Um, if if you have any any question, uh, I will be happy to answer. And also, uh, sorry, I have to say that uh, we try to to do the the practice uh, um, uh, in in FIBAO, no, not online, as as much as we could. Well, I think that is much better, Pablo, because they can learn much more in, in the place in the, when, and you know, with uh, having the opportunity to talking with everyone uh, that uh, online, that they feel more isolated and all of that. So I think that is wonderful that you have this opportunity. Yeah, uh, and also as, as Sally has mentioned, especially in the, in the first period, uh, we have to to show everything, how, how we do the, the process, where, where are the, the documents. Um, in, this, in this part, it's important to be to be face to face. Uh, well, from my, my point, uh, thank you, Pablo, for participating in, in this meeting. Uh, thank you. As, as always, it's a pleasure just to collaborate with you. And as I mentioned before, with the presentation of, of Sarah, uh, if, you, if you take a look to the lines of research or activity you are doing, 
uh, you can imagine you you go to to ask for a job in, in, in some enterprise say oh, okay um, I, I can do identification and protection of the knowledge in other words patents and other thing I can do market studies or marketing in, in general I can do uh, searching for active business partner so what what can you do more I mean uh, I'm sure that this is uh, one of the things that uh, necessary for, for innovation, for the development of enterprises. So it, it doesn't matter what enterprise you're interested, uh, all of these uh, skills are necessary. So that way, uh, I always uh, stimulate uh, the student in order to, to do the, the internship with you because, you know, the skills you can provide are never found in, in another place. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. As you have mentioned, Antonio, uh, it's important to know these, these these things, not only for to get a new job, uh, but for as you have said, many students came from the laboratory. It's important to, to know the researches in the to to protect before the publication, before the, to do a communication. So I think that after the, the student will be with us. Uh, they will have uh, a more knowledge of, of what they can do with the research and what is what is the the real power to say another some, some word uh, of the results. Okay, Pablo, thanks so much. So, are you going to explain a little bit more also uh, the the next? Uh, uh, offer from FIBAO that you ha we have it here. Let's see. Like, um, well, uh, I don't yeah. know if you, you have it there. Yeah, no? here, here it is. Yeah. Yes, this is one of, of the area I've mentioned before. Is the, yeah. the communication area. Uh, it's a very important area, and, uh, and nowadays, as you can as you can manage manage. Sorry. Uh, my colleague Pedro Lucas uh, is the is the head of this area. Um, as, as you can see in the in his presentation, uh, the the main work is to uh, do the, the corporate communication in, in digital environments, uh, and that in that involves all of kind of communication, also also social area or but. Uh, the main thing I think is to to make people know uh, what, what we do in, in, in research, what we do in FIBA, what we do in the IBS Granada, in the Health Institute, uh, and put it in value. Also, uh, the activity on research line, uh, that you can do a, a, a development of uh, application, uh, improve the web. Uh, not only our economic webs, but especially the two the two main webs that we have for FreeBow and for the Health Institute. And the, the main needs and requirement for the student, what, what you can see in, the, in this communication, digital communication, social media marketing, web, web development, uh, programming language as HTML, etc. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different area uh, from, the, from the other that we have uh, explained, but I think it's a very interesting one. Yeah, but here you need some more specific, uh, very technical knowledge like HTML, CSS, PHP. Have a, so uh, it's not just WordPress, for instance, or things like that, that is someone can use it. So. And it's more or less easy to use. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, a little more specification. Um, but I think that also here is a is a amazing opportunity in the sense that it's very difficult to under, to translate the uh, technical knowledge to the general public, and, you know, to the audience that is not so technical or so. Uh, mm, uh, I don't know how to say that has an, so much knowledge about the techniques or the scientific background and how to translate that and say the things in the right way is very important. So it's also an opportunity for them. 
Yeah, it's just just to be able to to take the results, the the, the specific result that we have, uh, as you have mentioned, try to to show them to to public, to general public, in a language that they could understand. Yeah, in a simple way. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that they can understand. So uh, I think that we can, Frank, you, you mentioned also the, the offer from Fran, no? That is here, no? Already, Sally, I think that uh, you explain a little bit about that. Um, Pablo, do you want to mention something? I realize that this is in Spanish, but we will translate it uh, because I just received it. But uh, if you have any mention here or, well, I can make a, a general explanation. I don't know if Sally wants to do it or I can do it myself, uh, whatever you want. Uh, but in general, for, for do a, a, to make a, a general explanation, uh, in the area of, of, of quality of my colleague, Fran Salcedo uh, uh, is the, the head of this area. He, he well, what he do is to to take or to uh, recover all the all the all the data from the different uh, from the different areas in Cibao, from projects, from technology transfer, uh, uh, clinical trials also, and try to put it in a way to uh, to make a, an accreditation for the uh, by the Instituto de Salud Carlos III. So. Uh, the main thing that you will be in this area is to try to, to get all the results from the different area, uh, make a lot of uh, informs or uh, reports to, for the for FIBAO. So it's more uh, an area for, for recovering and try to show uh, general data. Yes, I agree. Just to to explain a bit, because here you can see IBS Granada, and just to explain a bit what that is. Um, we could say that's one of the centers FIVAL also manages. So IBS Granada is the Institute of Health Research in Granada. What it, what it tries is it has the research, the excellent research in health. And this is qualified by the uh, Instituto de Salud Carlos III. There are just a number of institutes like this in Spain. In, in Andalusia, I think there are four. So, um, so anyway, so Granada has this institute. So he manages everything in that institute and with the support of the rest of Pival. So, um, and that's why we have here four specific lines, okay? Because these are the main research lines in the institute, which be oncology, precision medicine, uh, public health and advanced therapies. So, um, so uh, what Pablo has said is mostly giving support to the Institute and also recovering all the data and, and working with it and see they're also working in, in open access. They're also working in respons responsible research. So, so we, are, we, we work together a lot, but he focuses more on the Institute. Uh, I have one question because in the presentation is not clear for me enough. Uh, do you offer a possibility to be trained in, in clinical uh, trials or, or is it just uh, if depend? Uh, not this year, uh, other years no. um, we have had that option. Um, this year uh, is not available. Um, well, let's hope next year we, we can. In any case, if I, at least what we did last year is that the people, the students that would do the internship in FIVAL, um, they, they, they went to the different areas so they could have contact with the different areas and have the information they would need. So for a few days or maybe a day or two, they could be there asking questions, seeing how it worked, getting general information. So in any case, if the, the students are with us, they will have that contact and they'll be able to learn a bit about that. But we haven't got the internship at so this year. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. 
I think that is also uh, this slide that Fran prepared also. I don't know if you want to mention something from this. We will uh, translate it to <laughs> from the... Okay. Well, yes, basically, I think it's what we've said. Yeah, that's... Previously, uh, because we've given given a general overview. But yes, it's, it's what he's saying here, is to know, is to assess, is to... Um, value or put in value, I can't translate it now in, in English, um, the different activities and the process that we do in IBS Granada. And uh, we have to manage, and that's true, the, um, the improvement, a continued improvement. So, so always looking of ways to improve. So that means starting new processes and trying to improve um, the way the we work or the way uh, the institute can can work, giving the best options for the different researchers. So here he has a uh, services. Oh, well, I don't know if you said services in English, but it'll be quality, uh, because that's what what Pablo was saying before. Well, the, all the data analysis is carried out, and then the knowledge uh, management, which is getting all those. The, all that, that data and and then assessing, evaluating the information we have. I don't know if there's, there's another question and I don't know if it's clear enough. I think that is pretty clear from my point of view. Sorry, I don't know if the student have, I don't see more questions in the chat. I don't know if you have some, mm -hmm. but uh, for the time being, I don't see any others. So, but is it not that clear, this one? The nature of FIRA, yes, it's not easy. Um, <laughs> would you define yourself as a consulting company? It could be for biotechnology companies and research centers, because as I understand, you're able to offer a broad variety of services. Yes and no, um, in the sense that Yes, you could say we are some kind of consultancy because you did try to find the better options and and as, assess the research groups and also the centers. But um, you, we have a very closed um, service. Uh, the, the services we give are, are, are not open. Um, there's an agreement with the regional health service in Andalusia. So we can do a certain number of things. But in general terms, and in order to understand it better, yes, we could say a bit of consultancy in maybe preparation of European projects, preparation of different projects, and in technology transfer. I don't know, maybe Antonia Lourdes at know us uh, a lot as well. They, they can tell me if that's correct or not. But I think as a, to understand better what we do, maybe that, that would be correct. That's absolutely true. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, it's surprising that there are no questions because this is relatively new things for most every of us. So uh, maybe the, the question arises uh, later on once they try to digest all of this yeah. information. So maybe they, they can connect you directly and this is the best way just to yeah. understand each other. Okay. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, they've got our emails because I understand they, they have sure. the presentations. Sure. Um, but if not, um, we are open to any questions, obviously. Um, and also, if uh, some students want to come to our office one day, just to if they have any question they want to ask, uh, ask directly, uh, it will be okay for us to. It's difficult to, to find the place, yeah, because you have to explain carefully, uh, or you have to increase the size of the of the, of the level, in order to, <laughs> because it's, it's in the um, San Cecilio Hospital, in the whole hospital, mm -hmm. but this is before. But maybe you can explain better than me how to get the place. Now, yes, okay. Um, now it's um, well in English, but anyway, it's. For people that, that know Granada and live in Granada, and uh, I understand they've, they've done the, the master, obviously they know it. It's at the end of Avenida de Madrid, okay? Going towards La Plaza de Toros. And so it's just before you get to the 
old San Cecilia hospital. There's um, a, a small hill and that's the way you go in. There's also a big sign of urologia because the, <laughs> the, that's where you can go where the patients go. So I mean, that's another clue. But in any case, in any case, if you go to our website, there's in the part in contacts you can see the google map explaining everything and well and once you get there um we'll be in the second floor so but as i say you may find it and you can ask us if you like but the basic thing is we're in the center it's easy to get there I think there's another question from an Italian student that is saying, being an Italian student, I wanted to understand a bit how much of the set of skills that could be acquired to the internship could be then applied to other contexts other than the Spanish health sector. Wow, I think that the, the European project, uh, you, you can apply all these skills. Yeah, what do you think, Sally? <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously the European projects apply to any European country and some of the countries are not European as well. But um, uh, that's that's the main part. And if the and if the student is specially interested in that area, we could focus it only in that area. Uh, we could see about that. Um, in about the other calls, I'm sure they're very similar. I'm yeah. sure you've got the National Health Institute in, in Italy, which I should know the name, but I can't remember right now. And um, so, so, and I'm sure it's very similar because of what I yeah. know of other countries, you also have calls yeah. to support research and they're competitive calls. That's why it's quite difficult. And that's why you have that consultancy because you have to know very well the calls to, to be able to advise the researchers correctly. So, um, I think you can do it in other contexts, and not only Italy, in, in other, other countries. Well, I'm not, I don't think, I'm sure. Um, but we'll change uh, some rules of the law um, in, in what has to do with economic rules, okay? Because you can expand or you can buy up to, and there's some limits and there's some things that obviously that's national law. But in what involves calls in general, that will be very similar. Then there are specific differences, um, as I say, with different um, laws and how you manage the money and stand. And also, I, I want to say that uh, what we do in the specific area of, of innovation technology transfer is more or less what the different uh, innovation technology technology transfers among around Europe do. Uh, I went in 2019 uh, to uh, stay in, I think if we, it was in the University of Sassari. I think this is this is student know perfectly. And uh, how they used to do the, the technology transfer process is more or less the same as, as we do. And also for, for instance, the intellectual property and things like that, and to how to see the freedom to operate and all of the things are, are European or global, no? They have a global uh, yeah. uh, scope. <laughs> so yeah, because yeah. in this sector, I mean, in bio and health, everything is, should be global and your competitors and your customer, or your clients, everyone is, is global in order to yeah, be yeah. That's completely true. And also most of the patents that we have are, are uh, international patents, so the, the languages for or the the protection is uh, around the, the world. Uh, and also, if you are going to do something, imagine if you want to to help uh, for European projects that have to do something about regulatory, uh, the indication for use, the market claims, all the classification plan weight, all the things that you have to 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 study has to be also global. So I, I honestly think that there is not going to be any issue for a European students. Uh, I mean, it just that have to be in English, the, the things that uh, uh, you are going to uh, to study or to do, but as this, uh, that's how it should be in, in health and in biotech. Everything should be done in English, so. So I don't know if you have any other comments. 
thank you. Thank, thank you to Pablo and Sally. So thank you, Mate, also for your question. Um, um, please uh, don't be shy. Feel free to ask to ask any things that you uh, you are interested in because I mean it's a great opportunity. And here you have the people that have the professional skills and can solve your question. Uh, if not, we. We will finish the meetup and we'll really appreciate and um, thank you uh, to all of you for your participation. Well, maybe, uh, Lourdes, uh, we, we, we had to add because uh, in the presentation of CDAF, uh, they present uh, different lines, but uh, what they don't say or uh, didn't say at that time is that uh, CDAF is a center for integration of many different enterprises. So many of the enterprises that don't have uh, an ID. Uh, department just yes, go to the CDAF in order to do the analysis. So it's a good opportunity to to connect with enterprises in the sector. Yeah, because they have exactly they have a lot of uh, partners that are companies. So many many companies because even they have a pilot center, a pilot uh, laboratory in order to pre to preparation for the enterprises because uh, you know. This thing has to be optimized, and yes, to save money, uh, they you go to this uh, laboratory, central laboratories, and even more. Uh, some somebody asked about the supercritical uh, application, and maybe they, they can uh, tell you more about this because they use uh, most of this analytical chemistry and other uh, uh, engineer chemistry uh, techniques in order to apply to the industry. So. Uh, I think it's, a, it's another place in which uh, you had opportunities just to connect with many enterprises that don't don't offer position because they don't have love. So they only just produce things, but they need uh, research. Hello, can you hear me? Sure, Matteo, go ahead. Sorry, I couldn't speak before. I uh, just wanted to um, ask you something more regarding the, the possible duration of an internship in your institution and also the timing of this uh, internship? What would be the possibility? Three months, probably. Antonio, what do you think? Uh, I think in any case, you had to contact with the, the, the people who is responsible for this organization because I cannot tell you if they have possibilities or no, they, they have to, to be saved by them. Yeah, so you, I mean, you just contact directly. Okay, and uh, regarding FIBO, uh, what is the uh, main nature of the companies that you follow? I mean, uh, today we saw many, many companies uh, uh, that focus on the uh, food sector. I wanted to understand if the uh, health center sector is uh, in your area of interest. Mm, well, I can I can ask I can uh, resolve your question. I think uh, we we contact different different kind of comp of, co of companies. Sorry, especially uh, bio health area, obviously. But lately, the the last month. Uh, uh, the, they become uh, uh, the um, by uh, nutrition nutrition companies. So the because we are some of our patents can be can be applied uh, or, or can have an application in the nutrition or, or agro um, or agro sector. So but but the main companies that we contact are, are bio health companies because we have. Uh, we have uh, different kind of results. We we uh, we had uh, divide them by medical device, ITC, uh, diagnostic and therapy. So, as you can imagine, the main the main companies are, will be your health companies. Thank you. Okay.